Hi, I'm Dr. Don, and today we're going to be looking at a very important question that couples often ask, which is, how do we build commitment in a relationship? I often tell my students that if I only had one class to teach and one model to share with people, this would be the one that I would share with them because it's one of the most powerful that I've ever seen. And it's also a model that you can use and implement today and it's going to start making changes in your relationships right away. There are many different kinds of commitment in relationships. There is social commitment. In other words, we have a wedding and we say in front of our friends and family that I want to marry this person. And that's a form of commitment. There's legal commitment. Legal commitment is where there's a document that is signed and we say, okay, we've got our marriage license, and so there's legal commitments that we make. There's emotional commitments. People will come in and they'll sit down and they'll say, I think I've met my soulmate. I've met somebody that's very, very special to me. But the kind of commitment I'm going to be talking to you about is the kind of commitment that can actually be built over time. You know, when I go to the gym and I'm doing curls or I'm working on my triceps and we're doing reps, you know that if you do a particular behavior over and over again, it's going to result in change and growth to that muscle. Well, a relationship is the same way. If we do certain things repeatedly in a relationship, that's going to produce positive change. Richard Stewart, in his book back in 1981, Helping Couples Change, the landmark uh, book in couples therapy, said, positive actions are likely to induce positive reactions, first in people's attitudes and then in their behaviors. So our model looks like this. If we were to follow a couple around, two people in a relationship, and we were to film them 24-7 all the time, and then we were to analyze their behaviors that they exchange between one another, we'd analyze them on two different scales. The first scale that we would analyze would be frequency. So that's our F scale, frequency. Everything that happens between two people in a relationship can be measured in terms of frequency, how often those things occur. So frequency can be either low, something doesn't occur very often, or it can be very, very high. Frequency happens all the time. It's something that's very, very regular. And that tells us part about what's being exchanged between two people, but that doesn't tell us the whole story. The other scale that we measure is the value of a behavior. So we're going to add our value scale. And value, just like frequency, can be measured in terms of low and high. There are some behaviors that have very low value to us, and there are some behaviors that have very high value. So if you put the two scales together, you can see that anything that happens in a, a couple's relationship can be measured in one, one of four different quadrants. So let's take them one at a time. The bottom quadrant, is low frequency and low value. So that means these are things that I don't like, so I don't like them, but they don't occur often. Things I don't like, but they don't occur very often. When I was growing up, my dad was raised on a wheat farm in Kansas. And he walked in and announced to us one day, we're going to have great family vacations, but we are never going to go camping. And he said, the reason for that is I grew up on a wheat farm, so I grew up camping 24-7. Uh, we're not going to do that anymore. So for him, camping was low value, and for us as a family, it was low frequency. So this is a quadrant that does not build any commitment. In other words, we don't enjoy doing them, and we're not going to do them very often. This quadrant is high frequency and low value. So that means these are things that I don't like and they occur too often. I don't like them and they occur way too much. So couples will come in and they'll sit down and they'll talk to me and they'll say, this is something that my partner is doing and it's just kind of driving me crazy and it happens all the time and I wish we could cut that thing out. People walk in and oftentimes they'll say to me, we are late everywhere we go. 
I grew up being on time, and I'm married to someone who is constantly late, and I would just give anything if we could be on time, or at least try to be on time, sometimes in our relationship. So one of the things we discover is things that I don't like that happen too often actually detract from building commitment in a relationship. So let's go to the top half. We've done half of our model. Let's go to the top half now. Top left. The frequency is low, but the value is high. So these are things that I really do like, and I wish that, that they occurred more often. Okay. So these are the things that couples will say. Someone will say, you know, my partner every once in a while does this. And when he does this, it just means the world to me. And I wish he would do that more. Someone will come in and say, I'm always the one that plans our dates. I'm always the one that initiates things. I'm always the one coming up with ideas. I wish that my partner would initiate sometimes and take the initiative to do some of those things. So in this quadrant, these are things that we do sometimes and if we did them more, they would actually build commitment in the relationship. The quadrant that I want you to remember and the one I want you to use in your relationships is top right. These are things that I really do like and they occur often enough to be satisfying to me. So someone will come in and they'll sit down and they'll say, every time I talk to my spouse, they pause they turn and look at me, they give me their full attention, and I know that they are really interested and they really care about me. Well, what they're describing there is, and they'll say, and I do the same thing for them. What they're describing there is, they're describing this quadrant, high frequency and high value. And this is the, this is the quadrant that we recommend to you. So there are ways that you can build commitment in your relationship beginning actually today. One of the things you can do is you can keep doing the things that you're doing that your partner appreciates that are very small and specific and they're things that they value and appreciate very much. The second thing you can do to build commitment is you can take this quadrant and up the frequency. You can take the things that your partner likes that you do occasionally and you can do that a little bit more and that's going to build the commitment in the relationship by doing those actions to them on a more regular basis. The third way you can build commitment is coming down here to the things we don't care for very much. I can take the things that I'm doing that my partner doesn't appreciate and I do it frequently and I can reduce that frequency. I can cut that out some. So for instance, if I pretty regularly interrupt my partner when they're talking and don't let them finish their thoughts, one of the things I can do is I can reduce the frequency of that and that's actually going to build commitment in the relationship. So we recommend this model to you. You can begin actually today by starting to do some of those small specific things that build commitment right up here in this quadrant that your partner appreciates and that's going to in turn cause them to have a more favorable attitude and then want to reciprocate and do those things for you.